Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I decided to uh, create a video on how to build uh, VPN tunnels using crypto maps. Now there's many different ways to be, uh, to be able to build VPN tunnels, uh, but this video is specifically focused on crypto maps. Now essentially what we did is we have two uh, uh, network elements. So these are Cisco ASAs. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to configure uh, what the ASA likes to call the outside interface and the inside interface of both the uh, Cisco ASA uh, network elements that I've titled London and Ottawa ASA. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to uh, build a configuration using crypto maps so that when traffic from uh, London reaches the London ASA, uh, a tunnel will be instantiated to which, to which the traffic will then be able to progress through and continue through on its course to the destination to where there's a server in Ottawa that this particular user wants to reach. So having said that, let's take a look at the configuration that I have set up <clears throat> to build this, uh, uh, this VPN tunnel. And at the beginning, what you need is you need uh, to establish basic connectivity. Um, so we need to configure uh, the interfaces of the inside and the outside interface. So the inside interface is going to be a slash 24. That's very important. And the outside interface is going to be a slash 30. Now we create VPN tunnels for the purpose of um, uh, building point to point uh, connections over unsecured or untrusted network medias like the internet. Okay. And uh, what a VPN does is it allows you to uh, guarantee confidentiality, integrity, and also authentication um, over unsecured and untrusted network medians, medias, okay? Um, so to do that, you actually need to be able to configure the interfaces. So we're gonna do that right now. So we're gonna go on the London ASA maybe really quickly and we're gonna paste this configuration in there. We're gonna go to the Ottawa ASA and we're going to paste that configuration in there as well. All right. And once you have basic connectivity, so the London user is already configured. I've already configured the London user. So as you can see, he's already participating in the subnet 192.168.15 with the IP address of 10. It's a slash 24 and his default gateway is slash 15. Um, so having said that, um, there is one thing I need to do here and I have to uh, do a no shut of both the interfaces, which I do this is not part of my configuration. So let's do a no shut here. So it looks like both interfaces should be up. The London user should be able to ping its default gateway of 192.168.15. And as you can see, that works. The Ottawa user show IP. You can also see that um, a, this was the command that I was used to configure the interface. So he's uh, 182.168.30.10 slash 24. This is the default gateway. Do the show IP command. And this is what comes out. If I do ping the outs the inside interface of the Ottawa, uh, Ottawa ASA, uh, I should be able, and I don't because I did not do the no shut here. So I have to do a no shut there as well. And and there you go. So now what we do have, which is really good news, is we have connectivity to here. So this is good. News. So connectivity in this direction is good. What we need to do now is we need to build the configuration for the crypto map. So then traffic can po populate through from end to end simultaneously. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and, and build that. So to do that, we're gonna to move to the second portion of uh, the configuration which is the, this portion. So this is the London ASA configuration. So we're gonna give it a host name. We're gonna enable uh, crypto ICAP2 on the outside interface. So you can see how we name the outside interface outside and inside. That's uh, specific to the uh, ASA. And we recall that portion of the configuration in the command necessary to build the crypto map. So we have here the policy map we have the tunnel group, so it's relationship with the remote um, peer. 
with the authentication that will be used, the pre-shared key that will be used to authenticate the peer. We have the transform set uh, and uh, the IPsec ITF2 proposal. The, we have the access list that you, that's used to identify interesting traffic. And then finally, we identify uh, and recall uh, the crypto map and we bring it all together in one crypto map and then we apply it to the interface, okay? Uh, on the crypto, on the uh, Cisco ASAs, we also do create objects um, and the objects uh, are used to then be recalled in, in particular command lines like this one for matting inside and outside, okay? So let's go ahead and build this. Right, it took it nicely. Ottawa. Okay. All right, so I did notice one thing that's different between the Ottawa and the, actually no, they're both, uh, they're both good. I, I was looking at this static route. So essentially we need to be able, uh, to uh, tell the router or tell the uh, London ASA uh, how to route the traffic, right? Because once uh, packets destined to the 192.168.30 network, which is over here, the 10.192.168.30 uh, network, uh, what happens is once packets arrive on this particular router, he needs to have a static route that points out to uh, it's appropriate interface to be able to reach that destination and vice versa on the other side and to do that we have I just noticed it here in the configuration there is the static route so we have a default route that's pointing to the uh, remote peers IP address on both sides so having said that I believe that this should work now so if I do ping 30.1 uh, 30.10 you have to allow the crypto map to be built. Let's see what happens. And there you go. So I am getting reachability. I am now reaching the uh, Ottawa user. All right. Now, if we go on the London ASA and we do show crypto map SA, oh, uh, I give two SA, you can see that he has a peer, a tunnel. Right? And he was the initiator. He was the initiator because traffic was being initiated from London to Ottawa. Okay. If you do the IPsec SA, okay, you can see that we're seeing the security associations that have been established between the London ASA and the Ottawa ASA. Okay, with a whole bunch of uh, infor information, including uh, what is uh, allowed to be encrypted through the tunnel, okay? The amount of packets that have been encrypted, decrypted, um, a whole bunch of errors, uh, messages, like if uh, for troubleshooting purposes, obviously. Um, another, go to details, all right? And it gives you a lot more details with regards to um, the credentials, the criteria, the parameters that have been set, the S the remote SPI value, uh, the local SPI value. So just to uh, uh, test this out a little bit, I'm going to do a ping, a continuous ping. Um, I'm just going to let this go, a continuous ping. And I want to do a packet capture on this particular router. So we know that ICMP packets are being transferred on this link, but as you can see, it is encrypted, right? So it is completely encrypted. We've successfully created the VPN tunnel. Um, traffic that is transversing this unsecured or untrusted network is completely protected using uh, the encryption security packet. And this is exactly what we want. We, we want to be able to protect uh, our, our data um, over these unsecured or untrusted uh, network mediums. Okay, uh, again, there are many different ways of being able to build VPN, uh, VPN tunnels. Crypto Maps is one 
uh, selection, right, or one method of being able to uh, um, build uh, VPN tunnels. Um, and as we go forward, uh, I'll be including other videos uh, to, to build an in companionship to this one. So I hope you liked it. If you did, hit like, share, and subscribe to the channel. All right, thank you.